Before we get into the reason why one of these failed, uh, first here's the kit we're looking at. Those first things are toenail clippers for a sheep shearer, and then these are the hand scissors that are used for shearing sheep. And I think actually in this case, alpaca, but it doesn't matter much. That's how they operate. I've never seen them spread so far apart. I've tried to fix them before and it hasn't worked. So, okay, over to the, the I do these all by hand on the belt sander. <clears throat> starting here with a 120 grit Cubitron. That's the, I've, I've the, check out that angle. It's like steep. Uh, it's, um, I don't have a number on it, right? But it's like over 30 degrees. I've tried it before having them uh, like a finer edge. And the way these tools work, they, um, it just put, they caught, the edges caught on each other and it nicked the edge. And so now, and then I looked at some others over time and like they are kind of, they're steep uh, off the shelf. So, all right, here's what I'm doing. I took a few passes. I'm doing the scissor trick where you put them together and then you open the scissors and it pushes the burr back over to the bevel. And in this case, I noticed that the burr wasn't coming up uh, back on the bevel over the whole thing. So we need to do some more grinding. Please also observe, uh, this has happened to me in the past, where when I'm putting these uh, over the belt, the, the blade in the back has uh, in the past contacted the belt and then it just shreds the belt from the back and puts a little damage on the blade. So this is a, a slow, mindful, deliberate thing to position these shears on the belt. This phase right here, right there, that's the hard part. If you bring it too close to your body, that blade in the back is gonna hit the back of the belt and it's gonna shred it and damage the belt or damage the blade. So don't do that. Okay, on to number two here. And uh, so the first one's put up a burr uh, nicely. Uh, same process here, uh, doing this, trying to watch the burr on the backside. And in the past, I have also used a wire wheel to, uh, to push the burr from the flat side back to the bevel. Right now I'm feeling for it. Uh, this is the pair that ended up being a problem. And in this case, I probably should have observed that there was an issue with these, but it did put up a burr. And um, the issue here that we're gonna find out is the back side of these has been worked. So these actually needed a lot more grinding because somebody had worked the back side of that bevel. <clears throat> so even though it's putting up a burr, when you go to close them one blade against the other, the the edges don't actually touch because uh, it has a bevel on the backside as well. So it has to be flat, and these are gonna these are gonna have to get ground back quite a bit. But we'll find out more about that in the future. Okay. Anyway, this is the procedure. Um, here I'm doing the thing where I put them together. Oh, right, I'm spreading them apart to close, and I'm pushing them together to open, and that pushes the burr from the flat side back to the bevel. And now I'm looking at it under that bright light to see that I can see the burr along the bevel. And if I don't see it, then I do more grinding. Okay, let's speed up here and um, get to the next step. Going fast here, we're just gonna bomb through these. Um, these don't take a tremendous amount of time. This one ended up taking more time, but uh, anyway, charging on the order of 10 to $12 for these can kind of match that dollar per minute goal that I set for items in my shop. But anyway, moving on to the next step. Ultimately, what I've got here is the 400 grit Trizac belt, and <clears throat> it's just the same but different. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, being ma Making sure that the we match, or at least like work the apex of it here when that finer belt, and in this case, instead of pushing the burr back, I'm gonna close them, holding them together and cut the burr off with the other blade, uh, just like we do with scissors. And come over here and do the same thing on the other side, just repeating again here in normal speed to um, make sure that we get it. So previously I had pushed the burr back to the bevel. I'm using the 400 grit belt to Oh, got a little nick there. So what I'm going to do is pull it, push them together and pull that nick back. Push the blades together, open them. It pulls that nick back to the bevel. 
Makes it go away. Feels good. I'm really looking for that nick now. But let's just do another pass on that finer belt to make sure we get it. So I'm doing a pass on the belt to then close the blades together to cut that burr off. There we go. And that nick didn't catch. Try again on this side. Cut the burr off. Okay, those are smooth. Um, the That's essentially it. I'm gonna call that good. Uh, I'm gonna do the rest of them here, but uh, so for these, what I've been doing, uh, I've gone through a bunch of different iterations, like all the way up to like polishing them. Uh, I don't still know exactly what is best. I don't use these tools, and but uh, I'm in this instance, I'm finishing at 400 grit and then deburring with leather. So I'll go through the rest of the scissors on this uh, Trizact and uh, I'll just jump ahead to working them with leather. Hey, Matt here, just jumping in real quick to let you know that this is the style and type of information and content that I produce for the Guild of Professional Sharpeners. Uh, one advantage of being a member there is that there will be a running dialogue. So we'll go back and forth on this and we'll, we'll fine tune our procedures and we will all get better with time. So if that sort of thing interests you, like being part of a community, um, improving your sharpening, helping each other out, all working towards each other's success, both in sharpening and in business, like making money from sharpening, then you'll want to check that out. And that's at guildofsharpeners.org. And I will also leave a link in the description of this video. Thank you. Here we are, same but different. Now I have the leather belt. Uh, I use white compound on it. I'm just doing a deburring pass and cut it off. Another deburring pass. And cut it off. Okay, that's pretty much it. Just do that with all the others. And that's, um, that's now I would consider those done. Now onto the cut test. So this pair is cutting nicely, nice and clean on the paper towel. And this pair, oh, you know what? I don't even have them together here. I shouldn't even show you this knucklehead. I'm looking at the camera and not you like, oh, that's a terrible cut test. Hold on, I, I think, there we go, got it. All right, but now I got them the, positioned the right way, but it's still sloppy. See, it's not cutting, It's that's the failed part of the cut test. It's pulling them apart. It's not cutting smooth. So let's take a look at that. Here's what's going on. Yeah. Yeah, you see that line? The, the back's been worked. And I mentioned that earlier, right? Yeah, right there, the back has been worked. Somebody took something to the back of this blade and put a, a bevel on it. So like the, the edge, the apex doesn't touch when you close them. This is a big no-no, like on scissors, any sort of tool like this, you can't, you can't do that. So the only way to fix these is to grind all of that back. And um, I, so I gotta, I mean, it might not look like a whole lot on the camera, but it's a lot of grinding. Here's a pair that has not been worked on the back. There's that line we're seeing is just the, the contact point. Like there, those have not been worked on the back side, and that's uh, here. I'm gonna learn, put them actually together the right time, but the right way. But yeah, like these, nice clean cut, right? All right. So that's I should have caught that earlier, uh, but at least I caught it in the cut test. All right, I didn't go back and show you the whole process. You know, like when, when you fail a cut test, you kind of feel like stop, you don't want to record anymore. But anyway, there we go. So I have actually, uh, I've removed, you see now that, that part on the back is all gone. It's a, it's a fresh edge back there now, it's flat. The other issue I encountered after putting these together is if you look at them and close them like that, you should see a little spot, a shadow of contact if you're looking for light through the blades. Uh, and I found out that they were bent as well. So they'd been worked on the back and bent. So I put them in this little tool like this. I'm just showing you this here for like, to show like what I did. I didn't record actually doing it, but bend the blade back so that they actually contact when closing. And here, just to prove that it worked and like the way they should cut nice and smooth, right? Like that's the way they should. I'm glad that I caught the fact and then like, oh yeah, easy, very nice, right? I'm glad I caught it. Yeah, you know, and then here's just an image. Uh, the, a lot of times these come with a leather pouch or something that like 
the shearer might wear on their hip. These had no sort of pouch or anything. I tried like rubber banding them together, but like they're kind of sharp now. So I ended up just putting them in the like, cut off sleeves and uh, um, just sharing with you. Like I thought that was like a nice little easy, quick way to send them back. All right, that concludes that project. I hope you find it helpful.